So it is concerning. Clearly, we these people have a right to protest, and they have a right to express their, their views. But when you've got a truck there that potentially sets them up for violent activity, that is beyond the scope of what our Constitution allows and certainly not a good thing for the city or for our country. Now, we hear uh, from the attorney general and others, this, the governor of Florida, talking about using you know, RICO statutes to try and go after people. Is this what they're talking about here, finding out who paid for this truck, tracing the money, following that kind of paper trail, finding out where that leads, and then rolling that up to you know, whoever may be funding these, these operations? Yeah, I think you've got it. I, I, they, there's clearly somebody behind this that, that got that truck out there and, and funded the, the supplies that they were using. And I don't know if it'll turn out that, that, that it's a RICO violation, but it certainly could be. Yeah, we've tried to explain why that has been so valuable or why it could be valuable and why it's been valuable in the past, to, you know, with cases involving the mafia and things like that, and why some people might feel like this would help with these widespread protests. Are, are you, I guess maybe it's not surprise is the right word, but I continue to be a little bit surprised to see how quickly these protests materialize. You see trucks show up. I mean, we knew the report was coming out yesterday, so it must have been staged. Oh, I think so. And I think we've seen this across the country over the last, you know, six months or so, that, that these types of protests look staged. Certainly in my state, in my state, it looks staged. And the fact that they are so organized and have this equipment already ready just makes you wonder and certainly is something that we believe is happening. Yeah, I know you were at the White House yesterday talking about social media. When it comes to social media, one of the things we focus on is, is, is the disparity between the way conservative voices are treated versus liberal voices. And I want to talk about another example of that, uh, not directly related to social media, but it comes to the way these protests are being treated. In Portland, Oregon, just yesterday, the Proud Boys, a conservative group, were denied a permit for their planned rally this weekend. Now, city officials say the permit was denied over coronavirus uh, concerns. The rally was expected to draw 10,000 people. So why are they not denying protest permits for these Antifa uh, mobs, but they're denying for Proud Boys? And let me stop you there, probably because Antifa doesn't apply for permits to protest. <laughs> That's probably right. I mean, probably don't apply. And it looks like definitely there's some disparity in how they're treating liberal groups versus conservative groups. In America, under the Constitution, whether you're liberal or, or, or conservative, you have the right to protest as long as you do it peacefully. And I would support that right from any group that wants to protest as long as they are doing it peacefully, not harming property or harming other people. Yeah. Uh, we saw some video, I think, out of Oregon. There were um, people singing hymns uh, and they were arrested. That is a peaceful protest, but they were still arrested. Uh, you know, again, you, you do see a lot of disparity here. And, uh, General, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you guys talked about at the White House yesterday with President Trump as it relates to social media? So I think there have been concerns, uh, state concerns, federal concerns about how people are treated as it relates to social media, whether these companies are accurately describing you know, whether their views are being treated equally and whether there's, again, disparity in, in what they're letting on their platforms. They claim to be neutral, and yet sometimes it, it looks like that, that they're not. So we're do, we were just talking about different state laws that could be applied, uh, that they're consumer-related, and I think we're all kind of coalescing around this idea that we should at least take a look at what's going on and, and whether these companies are treating people fairly. Yeah, we, we talk a lot about Silicon Valley, but of course in Austin, Texas, and that's a big, big Austin, mm -hmm. Texas, that's a big tech hub as well. And, and you don't want to see the, the Silicon Val uh, Valley values imported into Texas, right? Well, there's no doubt. But at the same time, we're open to having all views presented. As long as when these companies are saying they're neutral, they're allowing all views to be heard, I certainly wouldn't want any, whether it's liberal or conservative, that any of those views to be stopped from being heard, especially if these companies are advertising or you know promoting a neutral platform. And if that's not true, they need to be they need to be held accountable. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.